Well, welcome everyone. My name is Michael Fichetti. I'm the Director of International Students and Global Scholars at Lewis University. Today, we wanna to present some information on the US educational system and studying in the United States, but I'd like to introduce to you our presenters. Uh, first, Dr. Scott Kurth, who is Associate Professor of Organizational Leadership in the College of Business, and Dr. Pramod Mishra, Professor and Co-Chair of the English Department. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Over you, Scott. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the overview of the U.S. education system. Before I jump into that, I'll give a brief background about myself. Uh, I, I am in the College of Business. I did an international study abroad as an undergraduate to Australia. Then I did another international study abroad as a graduate student to Belgium. And then after I graduated from my master's programs, I spent about 15, 16 years living and working overseas in Europe and in Asia. And I've lived in seven different countries and visited 60 different countries throughout uh, my history. So I have a fairly uh, diverse background with international um, studies and working overseas. And then I'm married to a foreigner. I'm married to a Czech citizen. So um, I kind of have a dual uh, um, international family. So the U.S. education system, unlike some countries, there is no national ministry of higher education in the U.S. So what that means is that there are greater differences in the universities and how they might approach education. Now, there are different requirements that all universities must meet for their accreditation, but it is not as standardized as you might find in other countries. And then the academic year, when we talk about an academic year, it's divided into segments. So at Lewis, there are three semesters. And what we mean by that is there's a fall semester, which generally goes from end of August until December. Then there's the spring semester, which in Chicago is actually winter. Uh, and that goes essentially from uh, mid-January to the beginning of May. And then we also have classes over the summer and that would be the summer semester. And that's how it works at, uh, at Lewis. And one of the other um, big differences is that students really have to take personal responsibility for planning their course of study. Um, it's up to them to understand what are the requirements for the program that they're studying in. So what do they need to do in order to, the total number of credits, the total number of classes they need, which distribution requirements, meaning what specific classes they might need to take. It's really up to you to go through the course catalog and work with your academic advisor and make sure that you've accurately registered and planned for the classes that you need to take in order to graduate. There's really not a lot of hand holding. In the US, it's very important that the student is proactive going out and setting up the meetings, talking to the advisor, and then talking to your professors also. Another aspect of the US education system is that the instructors, even in the same department, can use very, very different teaching method. Some professors might use a case method in the business school. Some might use lectures. Some might expect the students themselves to prepare lectures for other students. It is very different. And I encourage you to reach out to the professor and ask them what they think is necessary to be successful in their classes. Now, one of the big things that um, at Lewis, we have an honest, uh, honest system, honesty system here. And one of the big challenges coming from overseas is how different universities might uh, approach working together in groups and using the information written by others. Um, if it's not attributed, so if you don't say that this was uh, said by somebody else and then provide a citation or a reference, that is considered plagiarism in the United States. And that is a very serious academic charge, which can cause uh, you to uh, lose total credit or even be expelled from university. So it is very important that you understand what is meant by plagiarism, what is allowed from if you're working together in a team, um, it's very important that you understand those differences that might exist between uh, your home uh, place of study and at Lewis. Final, uh, finally, when it comes to how you study, 
the U.S. generally tends to be very interactive with class participation critical to a student's success. Um, now, if you're not as used to interacting with it uh, in class, it's something that you might want to uh, get some help on uh, because usually it's very important for the students to engage in the class with others during the discussion and the professors will have expectations of that. So those are some of the major aspects of the U.S. education. Um, if we can go to the next slide. Thank you, Scott. I will just briefly mention uh, that as a full-time student, if you're an undergraduate, you'll need to be in a minimum of 12 credits. Most classes average three, uh, three credits per class. So for an undergraduate, that would come out to four classes in a, in a given semester. For graduate students, uh, because our, our programs are set up in eight-week sessions, uh, normally a student will have to take nine credits over the total 16 weeks or say six credits in one session and three in the other or vice versa. But the total accumulative credit base must be nine credits. If a student needs to withdraw for classes or it, it, it needs to go into a different program, first of all, please consult with your academic advisor and then uh, check in with the international student's office as well. Okay. All right, Promote, and you'll talk to us about expectations in the classroom. Yes, um, so as uh, uh, Professor Kurth uh, pointed out that uh, classes uh, here in the US at a graduate level as well as at undergraduate level um, differ from discipline to discipline um, and, and, and levels. Nonetheless, um, one important thing that's common is that uh, even though there are days when the professor lectures, there is always a uh, interactive a mode that professor, professors adopt, uh, asking questions, having discussion in the classroom, uh, giving projects and working on those projects, meeting with their students. And so a lecture, and discussion, uh, it's not a watertight division. Uh, some days or part of a class, uh, the professor might lecture, uh, but then the rest of the class might be devoted to discussion among students, between the students and the professor. Um, now, since the pandemic, uh, we have <clears throat> diverse uh, modalities of class uh, classes. Uh, some classes are totally online, uh, on Zoom, on Blackboard. Uh, some are, are blended, hybrid classes. Uh, one day face-to-face, -face, two days uh, online. So there are different varieties of classes and, and a student would be uh, well advised to uh, look at the modality of a class before registering. Um, and, and, and so uh, the other important aspect of uh, U.S. classroom is the attendance and participation. Uh, more often than not, um, syllabus or syllabi will have uh, the attendance and participation policies, but also some grades assigned, points assigned to um, attendance and participation. And the emphasis is that uh, the, the students will participate uh, in the classroom uh, while uh, there is a classroom activity uh, going on. Uh, on, on a particular day. Uh, there is frequently group work uh, in all disciplines, but I suppose uh, more in business um, and other uh, sciences, but also in the humanities um, and, uh, and the social sciences, uh, professors do um, uh, emphasize on group work among students, uh, group projects. They have to work as a team uh, to finish a project, um, write a project paper, or even do the presentation. In my classes, I always assign group work, both within the classroom as well as outside. Um, it's very important that a student who uh, is taking a class be punctual. Uh, lateness, late arrival uh, is not tolerated. If you do a couple of times, the professor will point out and, and will be, um, will be uh, forced to deduct some grade, participation grade and so on. Um, but uh, when you leave a classroom, 
you might want to inform the professor beforehand that you have something uh, important that you need to attend to, uh, and then you can quietly leave. Uh, but if you leave without uh, letting the professor know beforehand, uh, once is okay, but if you do it uh, more than once, then uh, you, the professor will notice and will let you know why that's the case and will ask for explanation. Uh, next slide, please. Um, uh, in terms of uh, how an international student uh, fares uh, in the United States, um, I have my own experience to share. I came to the US uh, many years ago, um, over 30 years ago, as a graduate student uh, from Nepal. And I had studied in India and Nepal. And when I first came uh, to the US, uh, there were many novelties waiting for me, but there were also many shocks uh, waiting for me. Um, so I came uh, by myself and I had to figure everything out on my own. And in those days, uh, as you know, uh, there, were, there was no internet, there was no uh, social media. Um, a computer system was just uh, coming up. And fortunately for me, uh, there, were, there was uh, these big DOS computers, um, floppy disks uh, that uh, I was able to type. So one of the most important challenges I faced in my first semester uh, is that was that I had no experience of typing anything. I didn't know how to type. And so I would write everything in longhand. I bought a typewriter, didn't work because I was too slow and too many mistakes happened while typing. Fortunately, there was a lab somebody pointed out, a computer lab that had just come up and that had word processing um, fundamentals. And that really helped me. And I would type one paper for a whole hour. I mean, one page, a whole hour uh, it would take. And it, you know, the first semester was really, really rough. So I would advise uh, students coming from um, overseas to the United States, uh, particularly from, from, let's say, develop, you know, uh, South Asia or, or African countries where there is no system of teaching students typing in their high school, that they should learn typing, even take a course for a month or so before they come to the U.S. It'll make their life much easier. Um, there is, of course, loneliness here. Um, you, you stay by yourself. Um, and, uh, but, but the thing is that, you know, social media these days makes things, everything uh, easy. And so it's always uh, important to connect with people, make network, make friends, um, and, uh, and try to get out to the gym. And there are so many facilities. Um, usually when people come from, students come from, I came from, um, let's say, Nepal or India, um, my English was different at the time. I had not spoken English as uh, a language of daily activities. Um, I had taught college, but even then it was difficult for me to carry on uh, a small conversation with people. So, so initially it was a challenge, but I think that uh, globalization has made the English language a very common uh, in many parts of the world. So I don't think it will be a, a, a difficult thing for uh, students from uh, non-West US countries to come and, and speak. But, but the main thing is that there are many kinds of Englishes that US universities and people are increasingly exposed to. So even though you can't speak like an American with an American accent, Midwestern accent, you can speak in your own tone and slowly get used to it. The main thing is that you should think that there are many different kinds of Englishes spoken all over the world. And so therefore no reason to feel, feel shy or feel diffident or, or, or uh, uh, not have confidence to speak, once you just speak the language. Uh, because I have, I have spoken many languages, I speak uh, you know, more than a half dozen languages. I know that uh, nobody is perfect except, except for people who have only one language that they speak all their lives. Uh, anybody who speaks more than one language, uh, there is always this room for um, ambiguity or difficulties or challenges. And so, so that, should be, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, and of course, uh, is, uh, so for example, when I, when I came on a Fulbright uh, to the US, uh, we were given three weeks of orientation. And in the orientation, among other things, like teaching us about coupons, which I had no idea, even though I had masters in English, uh, I had no idea the lecture, the lecturer kept on talking about coupons for three days. 
and I didn't know what that thing was. Um, but then uh, they took us to baseball games. Uh, one, one, one day uh, we were taken to bar hopping, which I had no idea about. And so it's important for international students to explore their surroundings, to, to taste new things, go to, in, in our area, for example, um, we have uh, Naperville, there are uh, South Asian grocery stores, there are Chinese grocery stores, there are actually even Ethiopian restaurants. So uh, in the US, all, most countries are represented in the form of grocery stores, restaurants, and so on. And so uh, one should explore those things. Uh, about our own university, Lewis University, um, I would like to say uh, a few words about it. Uh, Lewis is a Lasallian university. It's a Catholic university, Catholic private university, but also the, the more important thing is it's a Lasallian university. What that means is we have uh, about uh, 20 uh, Lasallian brothers, monks, who live on campus, and they carry on the mission of uh, the first uh, uh, founder, uh, Don Baptist de Lasalle, uh, Don, uh, um, John, John uh, what was the name? John Baptist de La Salle? Yes. Um, a Frenchman of the 17th century who devoted his whole life and wealth to educating the disadvantaged students. And that's the important message that our monk brothers who live on campus uh, have devoted their, their lives. And so when you are on campus here, uh, we are constantly, I, when I came here first as a, as a professor in 2010, I felt that this university was different from others because we have this uh, LaSalle mission of helping the advantage, uh, and advantage, disadvantaged uh, students. But also we have this thing called the sanctified zone. Uh, our campus is a sanctified zone, which means that anybody who is on campus, a student, professor, staff, whoever is on campus um, are accorded full respect. And because we are all human beings, we are viewed equally. Uh, even though we are Catholic university, our religious mission is ecumenical. Um, I, for example, because, because I come from South Asia, I'm constantly reminded that it's a Vivekanan's uh, philosophy of, of accepting everybody uh, and, and their basic humanity, because there is this, there is one God, uh, you know, that we all um, respect. And, and even if we don't respect, that's fine too, because on our campus, there are atheists also. So it's a very ecumenical uh, campus. And I must say that uh, since I have I came here, since I, I, I got here, I have been really very uh, lucky and fortunate. Um, and my experiences have been very positive. And I'm sure that uh, when you come here, uh, you'll be welcomed and uh, you'll be respected and helped in all ways possible. Thank you so much, Pramod. And lastly, Scott, we'll have you talk about being a successful student at Lewis. Yeah, I think um, I would just reiterate what um, Dr. Mishras was saying, that um, you really do want to get involved, um, especially if you're coming over with others from uh, your country. That's a good thing and a bad thing. It's good because it can help you get over some of the loneliness and you can share some of the stories, um, some of the challenges that you have, because you will have some challenges. But it's a bad thing because then you kind of miss out on some of the local experience. So you want to make sure that you do push yourself to go out and experience things locally. And in order to be successful, make a connection with the professors. The professors are there to help you out. They want you to be successful. So reach out to them, understand what are the main things that they want to emphasize. Uh, some professors are more strict than others on certain things. Understand what those things are for that professor. Don't be afraid to ask for help. We have an international student services group, work with them. We have wonderful writing center. We have other tutorials that are available. If you're struggling, reach out and get some help. We have student services if you're having some emotional challenges adjusting, which is normal when you're overseas. That's why it's called culture shock. Reach out and get some help with that, okay? Um, 
develop friendships. You want to take advantage of this international experiencing that you international experience, go out and do things. I know sometimes you could be on a restricted budget, but find ways with public transport, other people that might have um, a car or something where you can partake in the different activities. You want to experience the different culture. So that, you know, getting involved in uh, campus, definitely join clubs. Um, I know we're having a lot of Indian students start a cricket club, teach Americans what is cricket all about. Um, they won't have a clue, but, you know, teach them. See if you can get, you know, badminton, um, start different clubs that are your interest, okay? Have cooking things together. You want to get involved. So that's, and, and again, have realistic expectations. At the beginning, there might be some confusion, but you might be very excited being here. So it's an emotional high. And then when the winter comes or when you're having some troubles, there's going to be a low. And then it's going to, you know, come back up again. So there's going to be periods of good and bad. Make sure you have a support group, friends, professors, resources at the university that can help you get through that. Okay. I don't know if you would have anything else to add, but um, I loved my international experiences living and going to schools over there. Oh, and one of the things that when you're talking about English, um, my wife has been here for 16 years. She speaks very good English. She got a master's degree here. She still goes out to places and people are like, what, what? And she can get frustrated with that. I lived overseas in Singapore. I traveled overseas. When I was speaking to Singaporeans in English, Sometimes they didn't understand me. Just slow down, say, oh, could you repeat it? Could you speak a little bit more slowly? Ask the professor for that. That's okay. Okay. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, on behalf of the uh, International Student Services and Global Scholars Office, we appreciate your time, your insight. So uh, thank you again, uh, Dr. Kurth and Dr. Mishra. And we wish all of you uh, students that are uh, interested in coming to Lewis or are here now uh, much success. Thank you. Thank you.